Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Welcome back. For you Reaper enjoyers out there, I have for you a 16 kills to just short of 2 million damage on Sohaker's solo match. This round had some great back and forth, and was 80% midpoint uptime, allowing me to dive deep. Abusing Grim Swarth, Plentiful Harvest, and Tenebrite to their fullest potential, it is no secret that the Reaper performs best with a Dark Knight by their side. As a solo, I look for openings created by the enemy teams. Thank you all for tuning in, as we have now reached 3200 subscribers. Enjoy today's video? Let me know down below if you yourself enjoy playing the Reaper. Enjoy your day, and I shall see you all in the next one. When playing solo, it is best to pre-plan your playstyle. As a Reaper, I like to play rather aggressive. This means I want access to my Arcane Crest as much as possible. Before I jump deep into enemy teams, even if you play a bit more passive as a Reaper, the Arcane Crest is still your most important skill, granting you a 12,000 barrier and a 10% damage increase. Once this barrier breaks, you apply a powerful regen to yourself and those around you. This allows you to aid the team by existing and helps in longer drawn-out fights. To start this round off, I head straight to mid, where all the Maelstroms and Adders divide off. I want to be here nice and early to push back any small group that may contest. A small group of adders move in on their ramp. This is the perfect location to use Grimswar for that mass heavy. It forces out Purifies. And thanks to Arcane Crest, I did not have to use any Recuperates. With the Maelstrom moving in, I want to fall back ready to re-engage, and do what I can to pressure them out, including targeting a Sculler, grouped with his team for a 6-stack Plentiful Harvest. I am not aiming to go for kills here. I am trying to scare them enough to back off. My aim is to stall long enough for my alliance to regroup. As soon as I spot a Dark Knight going in, I follow up, with Grim Soir for that mass heavy. I then back off to not overcommit, and take the time to heal back to full. My plan now is to limit break the Maelstrom. They have been here for the longest time, and should have the lowest MP reserves. I move in while using Arcane Crest, followed by my limit break straight into Communio. Going solo like this is too risky, to use the midi portion of the limit break. Instead, just throw out that big hit and back away. You will start to notice I use Death Warrant a lot, not for setting up the big one-shot combo, instead for access to Harvest Moon. Going solo, you want to spam your AoE damage whenever possible. You might snag a kill, but equally as good assists for any kill your team secure. These not only build your battle high, making you far stronger as time goes on, but gives you stacks of Immortal Sacrifice. You can hold up to 8, with each stack increasing your plentiful harvest damage, which is the best skill to steal kills in groups of enemies. My team does get forced out, as the Maelstrom invest their Dragoon limit breaks, and I can see the Adders are now moving in, investing their own limit breaks. The Maelstrom are forced to retreat back to their ramp. I only have 4 stacks, however there is enough incoming damage, to possibly steal a kill from the Adders. With great success landing myself that first kill, I now jump back and forth a lot, trying not to get caught out. As soon as Grim Swarth was ready, I go back in for round 2, and take a look at just how fast my Reaper's limit gauge is climbing in this situation. Within a few seconds spamming AoE damage, I was able to fill the last third of my limit gauge. The team scores are pretty even, so I do not have to worry about that for now. So right now I am playing the waiting game to keep the store going, and to build those stacks of immortal sacrifice. My stubbornness pays off. The Maelstrom have given up to capture zones to the south, leaving a small group of adders to clean up. It was tempting to use Limit Break, and my full power plentiful harvest, but seeing as they were almost all ranged rolls, I had nothing to fear. Jumping ahead slightly, I rotate north ready to contest the adders on the bridge. With my team so divided, I took the chance to attempt at a storm. I managed to land some decent damage, but I overstay my welcome, as far too many of my team are holding back, to defend a B-ranking spawn, the Adders were able to dive me with little to no resistance. Right off of spawn, I find the Maelstrom were freely able to walk in. I see this as a chance to regain lost battle high, and waste no time using my limit break. Unfortunately, I do not plainly kill on the Monk. I am, however, able to claim a kill on a Samurai left behind and shortly after the S-Rank spawns in mid.
the Anas are once again first to contest. I hold the top of their ramp as bait, again using Arcane Crest straight into Grimswath for Max Heavy. And with such a pile right in front of me, I throw out a 7 stack plentiful harvest. And just as they try to push past me, I then use Limit Break, solely for the high steering's effect. As Red push in, I fall back for a recontest. This time they are more prepared. A lot of crowd control comes my way, and the warrior even tried to put me off top. A coordinated dive comes my way, forcing myself to guard up. I take what little chance I get, to gain a stack of Immortal Sacrifice, just before I am knocked from the platform. From here, I fall back to the hill just south of spawn, as the Maelstrom score is climbing rather fast. I did what I could, but once again my team are on the retreat. So from now on, I know I cannot rely on any help from my alliance. Instead, I will focus more on the openings created by the enemy teams, over trying to be a team player, who creates the opening for my team. Switching up playstyles, I saw immediate results, making my move down south. While both the Adders and Maelstrom were engaged, I could land a decent-sized limit break. Using the mini portion to burn down their samurai, I then switched my attention to their weak warrior for my communio, then combo off my plentiful harvest in Grim Swarth against the Maelstrom capping the Ovu, snagging another two kills landing me just short of a battle high free. I will also end the voice over here, as from this point on, is the turning point in the round leading up to our victory. I am playing much more for myself rather than for the team, but I do repeat the same process. Arcane up and AoE damage into the enemy teams. As my battle high grows, this becomes more and more effective, with some really nice battles ahead. Hopefully the remainder of this match gives you an idea of what the Reaper is capable of. Enjoy the rest of the round, and I will see you all in the next one.